Phenomena-based learning and instruction asks students to think more deeply and critically about science concepts, and it also reflects a more true scientific process. So when I talk about phenomena, I'm talking about things that we see in our natural world. So for example, today we have multiple different cloud formations happening above us. We've got low-lying clouds, we've got high wispy clouds, we've got all sorts of different things happening in our atmosphere, and that's a phenomena. So we might ask students, why, uh, why do we have these different cloud formations and how did they get there? And so through that lens, we might teach the water cycle or convection cycles on small scales, on large scales. So these phenomena provide a context for how we teach different science concepts. So science hasn't changed itself, but our curriculum instruction has changed around making those concepts more meaningful in context of a phenomena that we see in our world every day, whether it's natural phenomena or whether it's in our engineered world. So that's the biggest difference uh, with this new course that we've created, is it's all phenomena based. So this particular unit um, focuses a lot on engineering and design, and we're basing it off of a device called the BioLite, which was created for the population of the world. It's about one third that are still cooking over open fires. About 150,000 people die every day from smoke-related illness due to cooking fires. So what, we're, what this company was trying to do is reduce that smoke, create an efficient fire, plus allow these people to also charge devices. So it's completely student-driven. Um, the students create a list of what's called need-to-knows. So once we uh, do our initial modeling, um, they will come up with things that they think they need to know more about in order to fully explain the phenomena at the end. Um, other science classes I've taken, they'll just hand us a textbook and say read it and talk about it. And typically that's not how most students learn. They need to see things, interact with things to understand what's going on. So this class kind of shows you what's going on and how things work and it's real life. I used to, I used to really hate science because I was really bad at it, but I feel like it's, I understand it a lot better. She's like pushing us to do our own thing. It's not just, here's what you should know and this is how you should do it. It's find your own way to do it. Find your own way how to like understand it, I guess. This is just a very, very, very fun class in general. I recommend those who are at least somewhat into science take it. And if you're not into science, take it and maybe you, you will find a new interest in science. It's definitely easier to learn in the class. Um, the material is definitely not easy, but the way that they have it set up, it keeps your mind open and it, it allows you to uh, have your own ideas, and so it, it definitely is easier to learn. I never really actually got very good grades in science beforehand because I would get really bored in science class, and um, it's definitely helped me. I was at best a C student beforehand. I get straight A's in the class now. And so yeah, we might not be teaching science the same way as you had it, or as I had it, but school's also not the same. This community's not the same, the society's not the same, the jobs aren't the same. And so what this methodology is doing, it's adapting and it's able to adapt more readily to the present situation, the present needs. And with this methodology is that I'm training kids on how to interact with each other. I'm training kids on how to engage with something that's different. I'm training kids on how to be okay with being wrong, but finding out how to ask the right questions and find the right resources. Ambitious Science Teaching is uh, really a framework of uh, excellent teaching instruction and it's been uh, developed out of the University of Washington. Uh, Wenatchee High School and uh, other schools in the, in the region asked about some current instructional materials around the next generation science standards and then the ESD thought what a great opportunity to support local schools. This is a really different way of teaching. Um, we're used to read the book, answer the questions at the end of the chapter and that's not where we're really going now. The intent now is to have students' ideas be the driving force for those units around a phenomena, and that means a teacher is more of a facilitator than an um, instructor standing on stage just espousing their knowledge. It, it requires a lot of work on the teacher's part to know what kind of questions to ask and not give away too much information. So that's a big shift from where we used to be, saying here's the information you need to memorize and please regurgitate it for me.